In this video, I want to talk about the temperatures that occur in chemical reactions. So the chemical reactions that we study in general chemistry. So here's a reaction where two moles of H2 gas react with one mole of O2 gas to produce two moles of liquid water. Okay, and this is an exothermic reaction, so heat is given off. But as we've talked about, a large amount of reactions that are studied in general chemistry take place at constant pressure. That's why it's most common to specify the enthalpy of the reaction. Also, some reactions take place at constant volume, where you can still specify the enthalpy of that reaction, but the heat given off in a constant volume reaction is equal to the change in internal energy. In a constant pressure reaction, the heat given off is equal to the change in enthalpy, the change in total enthalpy of all of the products relative to the reactants. However, what I always found confusing was that for a problem, you might be given a reaction. It tells you the pressure that the reaction is occurring at. So a constant pressure that the reaction is occurring at. That makes sense. But then it also might give you a temperature. They might say that this reaction here occurs at pressure one atmosphere and temperature 293 Kelvin. And this is confusing because this seems to imply that the reaction is taking place at constant temperature. That's not the case. And you can think about this from the sense that if there's heat being given off during the reaction, being absorbed or, or, or given off, well, then the temperature is definitely not going to be constant during the reaction. And you can also think about it from the standpoint that we've talked about how in general chemistry, we focus on reactions taking place at constant pressure and also some at constant volume. We've said nothing about constant temperature, though. So to make this clear, we, we talked about if we drew the PV curve, the idea is we have state one, which is the reactants. Let's say that's here. And then we have state two, which is the products. So let's say that's here. Going from state one to state two, we follow a path, but that, that it's a constant pressure process. The whole, the, throughout the entire reaction, the pressure is constant or the volume is constant. So this is a graph for two state variables, but you can, you can draw a graph for the relation of any state variable. We could have a graph for pressure versus temperature or temperature versus volume or internal energy versus volume, enthalpy versus temperature for any process. All they're saying here is that the temperature of the reactants and the products are at 293 Kelvin. So if, if, we, look, if we look here, the, the temperature versus volume for a constant pressure process, they're just saying that the temperature for the initial and final states is the same, but they're not saying this. So it could be any path. The temperature can do any, anything during the process, right? So I'm assuming this is like a combustion, combustion of hydrogen gas. If this gets really hot, well, then you can't have liquid water. You can have water vapor. So what the idea is, you start at like a room temperature, then you spark it. A lot of heat is then, the temperature is obviously changing. The pressure is still constant, right? We're in the atmosphere. The pressure is still constant during the combustion process, but the temperature is obviously changing, then you let all of that water vapor that's really hot cool down back to room temperature. Then from there, so from that entire process, that's the, you're measuring the heat given off, which is the enthalpy. All of that is at constant pressure. You see, we talked about this reaction. This is an endothermic reaction. You have solid mercury oxide. It gets converted to Mer liquid mercury and oxygen gas. So it looks like this is just in the lab. So it's taking place at constant pressure of one atmosphere for the entire process. Okay, but you've got this flame under here. The chances that during the actual reaction, the temperature is constant or slim. I mean, it could be, but probably not. Okay, and so the idea is it's like they're, they're heating this up. They're, they're supplying a lot of heat, but the temperature is not really rising. That's why it's endothermic. If anything, it looks like it's getting kind of cold. But even if it doesn't get, get cold, you're still just sitting there just leaving the flame on it, and it's not heating up. It's not getting hotter. That's because it's absorbing so much heat to perform this reaction. And so you leave the flame on there, and maybe the liquid mercury 
gets hotter than room temperature. So I'm assuming they started at room temperature. This gets hotter than room temperature. The, the O2 gas gets hotter than room temperature, but then you just let it cool down back to room temperature. And that's why they specify just a single temperature value. T is equal to room 293 Kelvin, room temperature. For a lot of the problems we work, the enthalpy of reaction, you're, you're calculating, whenever we do the enthalpies of reaction, you're taking the products, the enthalpy of formation of the products at room temperature minus the enthalpy of formation of the reactants at room temperature to get the enthalpy of, re of the reaction. And it, so it kind of seems like, well, the, so the whole reaction is taking place at room temperature? No. But I mean, you could, if you wanted to, if you wanted to have these heated up to, you know, higher than room temperature and you want to calculate the enthalpy of reaction. So you have to kind of specify, well, you start at room temperature and then you, then, but then we're ending not at room temperature. You could start with the enthalpies of formation of the products at room temperature and then just use the thermodynamics methods to, to calculate what is the enthalpy needed to raise the temperature of these components to a certain, to a certain value. That's easy because it's a constant pressure process. So if you're just calculating the enthalpy to raise the temperature of something at constant pressure, that's, not, that's easy to do. We're not going to get into that in this course, but you'll see in thermodynamics, that's easy. But as you know, we don't work with reactions in, in a lot of situations in general chemistry where they're saying the, react, the products have, have a different temperature than the reactants. That does not mean that the reaction took place at constant temperature. Most of the time, constant pressure, yes, or constant volume, yes. Okay, here's a reaction where you're burning solid sulfur, but you could let SO2 come back to room temperature. The SO2 gas, initially, right after the reaction is complete, the SO2 gas is really hot. That's if they give an enthalpy of this reaction, that's not what they're talking about, that right after the solid sulfur and the gas, all the solid sulfur is combusted and the SO2 gas is really hot, that's the enthalpy of the reaction. No, they're saying this comes back to room temperature. You have SO2 gas at room temperature, just like you had solid sulfur and O2 gas at room temperature. But the temperature of the system definitely changed. The pressure didn't, but the temperature of the system did. And the volume did. Okay, now we also talked about the, for the heat of solution of mixing sodium chloride in water. For kind of just experiment, we looked at this analysis of going from sodium chloride to to vaporize sodium chloride, so the ions just in air, and then having those ions hydrated, the heat of hydration. And we said that the lattice energy is the energy needed to vaporize sodium, chlor like a sodium chloride crystal. Okay, so this is a little confusing because you can't say, you can't, if, if we're just looking at this lattice energy, so the reaction of NaCl solid to Na plus gas, not aqueous. Th this is what happens when you vaporize a, an ionic compound, right? The ions are, as, are floating around as gases, which you can imagine that's a, that takes a lot of energy to, to make that happen because these ions want to combine into, want to come together. So there's a lot of energy to keep these as gases. But for this scenario, you can't, you know, they talked about how the enthalpy of, of this reaction is the lattice energy, 788 kilojoules per mole. But this is a little weird because you can't, there's no way you can have this in the gaseous state, Na plus ions and Cl minus ions at room temperature. You can't let this come back to room temperature. So how does this work? Well, okay, so they've got a calorimeter at constant pressure and they measure the amount of heat that's needed to vaporize some NaCl from room temperature to, you know, a, to a gas form. But you're going to have this gas at a, at a piping hot temperature, but that's what they've measured. The heat required to transform NaCl at room temperature to this Na plus Cl minus gas that's obviously going to have to be at a very hot temperature. So they've got that, that amount of heat transferred, but they can't let it come back to room temperature, right? So ideally you would see what is the heat needed to get to this point, and then you'd subtract the heat that's transferred out to come back to a room temperature form of, of these ions, these gaseous ions, and then that would be the, the lattice energy.
but you can't do that because this is going to condense fast as the temperature drops. So what you can imagine is what they do is they calculate the enthalpy needed to raise the temperature of Na plus and Cl minus ions to whatever the, the temperature of that gas is at. Just, to, just the enthalpy to raise the temperature. That's easy to calculate. And they subtract that from the heat needed to, to create this vapor from NaCl solid. There's going to be a big difference because a lot of that heat, you're leaving that burner on for a long time, way longer than you would need to just heat up Na plus Cl minus ions because all that heat's needing to break those bonds. Think about it just leaving the burner on for a long time. It's just, it's, it, it's the burner's on, it's just sitting on, and it's not, the NaCl's not heating up, but something's going on. It's absorbing all that heat. That's the lattice energy. And they can also, with similar analysis techniques, th they know what the heat of hydration is, just the heat exchanges needed to hydrate an Na plus ion and a Cl minus ion. So, 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 so to stabilize it in water, have water surround it, surround the ions and stabilize it. And that's a roundabout way of calculating the heat of solution, which you could also easily measure in a constant pressure calorimeter.